strangely, of late, there has been a trend in my recommended shorts where men, probably young men, if not boys, are fantasizing about dying. Uh, a last stand, sword in hand, uh, going out in a, in a hail of bullets, blood, guts and glory. And contrasting that with the apparently feminine desire to live a long life and die in bed surrounded by our loved ones. I don't know if this has come out of a, a misreading or a strange understanding of Norse beliefs that the only way to have a satisfactory life at all was to die in battle. The, the strong contrast seemingly between the warriors in Valhalla and those who died of old age and illness in Helheim. I used to work at uh, a Viking museum, and this is the reason I have this sword. It's, it's my sword that I uh, literally had with me every day for three years when I was being uh, Ulrich. <laughs> and... It was fantastic. It was great fun. And my colleagues were a wide variety of people. They were archaeologists, historians, enthusiasts, and they had a, a range of beliefs in the adherence that they took to, to this, this, this reenactment, basically. Uh, for for ma many of us, myself included, it was a job. It was a fun job, but it was a job. But for some, it was genuinely part of their identity. And there was one guy in particular who was constantly, <laughs> constantly reciting the Lo, there do I see my ancestors speech from 13th Warrior. Lo, there do I see my father. Lo, there do I see my mother. mother. My sisters and, and my, my brothers. brothers. In the halls of Valhalla, where the grave may live forever. And he seemingly would fantasize about going to the afterlife as a Viking. And that was that was fine. You know, we had a bit of fun with it. I, I, I once uh, asked if he would invite me along to his next human sacrifice, if he truly believed in the old gods. But the thing is, not long after I moved on from that role, that guy caught cancer. Um, bowel cancer, I believe. He died fairly quickly fairly painfully. And, as with my dad, actually, he died when he was 33 of bowel cancer. I'm now 40. My dad's death, my friend's death, these are no less poignant or meaningful than any other death. And their struggle was no less important despite the fact it wasn't on a battlefield or scored by an orchestra. These deaths aren't glorious in that sense, but they are heroic in their own way. All death is tragic. All death is meaningful. There is heroism and people who actually die in conflict. For example, today and November the 11th is, is a time of, of national, international remembrance for people who did die in war, died for us. But these Hollywood moments that seemingly elicit a sort of strange nostalgia for death in, in young men and uh, invoke a desire to contrast that with the weakness of living really don't know what death is. They don't know what the random death is that might occur on a battlefield. The, the, the meaningless swipe, side swipe of a weapon that takes off the top of your head and you're, you're gone. 
we're not all heroes in the heroic sense of a story. We're not the main character in a movie. We're people. And as much as I, I love, really love the fact that I have a genuine reason to own this sword, I am more like a Vulcan in that sense. I would rather, and I think it's more useful, to live long and prosper. But also, in that life, as long as you can make it, as rich as you can make it, as meaningful as you can make it, to remember and honour and respect the sacrifice of those people who, who had no choice. I don't know. I, I recognise that these clips are hopefully partly tongue-in-cheek, and they are undoubtedly atmospheric. I love almost all of the media that was featured in those clips. But there's something serious about the fact that those people who do die in war want you to live. Hmm.